Today I'm going to make a tutorial on how to install a dimmer on a power strip. The power strip that you want to use has got to be a metal one. And this one here I got at Home Depot. If you can't avoid the ones with the light on it because there's an extra circuit in there you got to deal with. This is the identical power strip from Ace Hardware without the light on there. They're made by the same manufacturer on the back. I believe these are also available at Menards probably without the you don't want the protected light on there, you just want the regular metal casing. These are about ten dollars a piece. This is the dimmer I'm going to install into it. These they have at Menards. I looked at Home Depot and I didn't see them there. Uh, you might be able to find them there, I'm not sure. I looked all over and I couldn't find them. It's just a basic dimmer for a torch lamp. It's rated at 500 watts. I like to use this instead of these, which I see a lot of people using. These are okay for one lamp. These overheat very quickly. If you try to run about 100 watts on these and dim it, you will probably start to melt the casing on here. They're not made very well. It's a very, very cheap dimmer. These are also about $10. And these you can pick up Home Depot, Menards, Ace, they have them everywhere. This was $8 at Menards and this was ten dollars so you're looking at about an eighteen dollar investment and I'm gonna show you the steps now to make your own the first thing we're gonna do is you gotta take off these two screws on this side and these two screws on this side the third screw that's in the middle leave that one alone and I'll show you why once we open it up alright now I have the screws taken off and you'll see that the back will just pop right out which will show you all the internals. The reason why we didn't remove that screw that's in the middle is that's actually holding the ground wires. Something we don't have to touch. Alright, next we got it open. We have to get the wire out that we need to use for the dimmer. Luckily when you wire a dimmer, even though there's two wires on it, there's only one wire that we're going to take off, which is going to be the black wire. It's always the one that jumps the switch on all of these metal casing ones that I've seen. It's the black wire is always the wire we're looking for so you'll see there's three prongs on it. The white wire just continues through the black wire is the one that's actually jumped by the switch so we're going to want to remove the black wire from the plug which these are push pins you got to push in with a screwdriver and pull the wire out all right I got the wire out to get the wire out like I said it's just a push pin you just put a flathead screwdriver and you push down on the pins and it releases the socket so you can get the wire out all right, now I took the dimmer out of the package. You'll notice that it has a cardboard box around it that you're going to leave on there. That's more or less like the insulation for it. Where the dimmer is going to go on the inside is going to go here. This is the only part you have to have a tool to do. So I'm going to need to drill a hole on the side. I'm going to put a hole. You can kind of line up the switch and see where the switch is going to go. That's pretty much it. I just want to drill one hole so I can mount the switch through. Alright, now I got the hole drilled. Uh, the best way to drill the hole is you can see on the dimmer if you take it apart. There's always a ring washer that's going to be on here. This is the ring washer. That fits over the nipple that comes off of there. That's the easiest way to size your drill bit that you're going to need for the hole. I got a thousand drill bits in one box. I don't know how everybody else keeps them, but don't really know what size it is. It might be a quarter. Uh, the best way to drill a hole through metal, of course, is drill yourself a pilot hole first with a small drill bit and then step up to the drill bit that you're going to need. And as you can see, we have a nice clean hole that's drilled right through the side. Now we're going to mount the dimmer. Alright, after fighting with the dimmer here a little bit, you can see it does fit. You just have to Make sure that the box stays on it. You can fit it in there. The, like I said the cardboard is an insulator, so anything it touches it's insulated from. It's completely safe. Now, as you see the hole I drilled through the front of the dimmer comes out. You put your ring washer back on. And it's got a basic lamp lock nut and that keeps your switch in place. So it will not move on you. Tighten that up. And of course, we have our little switch. And now I'm going to show you how to wire the dimmer. 
to the internals. All right, now for the dimmer, we want the smooth wire. There's a smooth and a ribbed wire on here. You can't see it too good on camera, but you could see it if you had it with you. We want the smooth wire, which is this side. The ribbed wire, we're not going to use it all. It's going to stay a dead wire. There's no electricity that's going to go through it. There's a ribbed and a smooth wire on this side. I'm going to cut the ribbed wire off both ends because we're not going to use it. I'm going to leave the smooth wire on this side. Smooth wire on this side only. Like I said, the ribbed wire is going to be a completely dead wire. There's going to be no use for it, no electricity in it. All right, now I got the wires cut back to what I need. The wire coming out of the top of the dimmer, the smooth wire, is going to go connect to the black wire. And this wire is going to go back into the original push hole that you took the first black wire out of. Now on this, you can connect these wires. They give you a wire nut, which wire nuts are fine. I prefer to use these. I really don't know what they're called. They're crimp terminals. They sell them. They got them at Home Depot, Menards, Ace. You just put both pieces of wire in there, and if you could see in there, there's two pieces of metal. Once you clamp it down, it's got the latch that comes over. It's a much better connection, much more secure than a wire nut. You don't have to worry about anything coming off. If you're comfortable with the wire nut, the wire nuts are fine. They're used everywhere. All right, now you can see I just connected the back wire off the dimmer back into the original hole that we took the black wire off of. Black wire connected to the wire coming out of the top of the dimmer and then this stuff just tucked back in there and we'll go ahead and put the cover back on and we'll show you how it works and once we get it put back together we will have something that looks like this now these are also an on off switch too which I usually never use these to shut them off though and then what I did here on another one that I already have, I have several that, that I've made already for myself as you can see I put markings on there and there's a little tab on the dial if you can see it and that tab will let you adjust the flow so you know where everything is running good at and I think that is actually my first mark there but they're variable these are very good timers uh, they don't overheat they don't get hot these are the same timers I was buying they were packaged at 600 watts now they say 500 I would always err on the side of caution. It's the same exact dimmer I've looked at it. There's no difference in them. It's probably just a marketing thing for some reason. They knocked it down, but same exact one, and we'll show you how it works now. All right, now we're in the test lab. <laughs> First thing you do is obviously turn the power strip on. As you can see, I got four lamps currently hooked up. You could hook up to 12 40 watts on here, which would be 480 watts of power just to stay safe and now with the dial you can see that I can dim all the lamps at once and this is a big advantage if you're going to run a lot of lamps at one time because then you can turn them down you don't have to mess with individual timers and as you can see I can basically turn them all the way off just from the dimmer and you could put them at any wattage that you want and I say one of the reasons why I had made the markings on the side of the power strip is you will find out that you'll have your area where it'll run perfect and you could set it right where it's at and you leave it. And that's my tutorial for making your own dimmer power strip. It's completely safe. And you could run 12 lamps again off of it just to play safe. I wouldn't go any higher than that. And another way if you want, which I have here, to run more lamps into the power strip, obviously you could just use a regular tap plug. These are available anywhere. And you could plug up to 12 lamps in at a time, so you could use a few of these and load up the power strip. And that's it.